morning to the online congregation, and I welcome those of you who are new. Good morning to everyone who's here with us in person. Um, I have an announcement that I want to make. I made this announcement last week, and I'm going to say it one more time. We're not going to be here physically at the church November the 20th. Um, the message is going to go out just like normal on Saturday, November the 19th. So you won't see any uh, change with the messages going out just like they always do. But we're not going to be holding services here at the church on November the 20th. So if you're planning to attend church here with us in person, always go to the website and check because Scott keeps it updated and he'll make an announcement there for any time that we're not going to be physically here in the church, okay? Um, because we don't want anybody to make a trip out for nothing and, and we're not actually be here that day, okay? Now, also I want to give a praise report. I think I forgot to give this one if I gave it. You know, just bear with me, forgive me, but I don't think I did. And I just wanted to share that a few weeks back, Sister Kimberly had shared that um, Mr. James had had, I think it was some varicose veins removed and um, he'd have some problems here and there with um, uh, a sore, a, an opening on his leg, not wanting to close up from all of that. And it had taken a long time and had seen doctors about it and it just wasn't wanting to close. And so she had asked for prayer about that and we'd been praying about that. And she gave a praise report and she wrote and let me know uh, that that spot, that opening on his leg did close up. So I just want to say thank you to everyone who prayed with us. Thank you to the prayer team. God answers our prayers, you guys. He really does, and we praise God for that. And thank you, Sister Kimberly, for sharing that. We're so happy for him to have relief and that that closed up. And God bless you and, and Brother James. Now, um, and, and I'll just want to say one more thing here while I'm thinking about this because uh, I had to go back and I was looking for something on uh, one of our messages, and I noticed that those advertisements are playing. I mean, you hit play, and the advertisement starts running. And, you know, and I just want to tell you guys, we don't have any control over that. Uh, they're basically forcing us to play advertisements now. And uh, I was looking back, like I said, at a, at a sermon, and those advertisements were going. And uh, our old platform, our original one, of almost 600 messages that they deleted. We weren't having to play advertisements then unless we had copyrighted content that they allowed us to play and keep in the sermon. But the catch was you had to have advertisements with it. But now they're making us play advertisements on every message. So that's not us, it's them. Just know that, okay? We don't monetize. We're not making money off of anything. That's them. Um, you know, if you want to have a platform there, they're making us uh, play the advertisement. So I will just say I'm sorry that y'all are having to suffer through all of that, okay? All right. So we are on New Age Part 6. We're going to be talking about monism, feminine God, and kundalini spirit. Now, I found some research that defines some of the main points within the new age and I thought it would benefit us to hear them you know we were defining the new age we've been talking about the golden age and the age of Aquarius and we've been seeing that all of this is just a cloaking for Satan and the fallen angels you know they've taken biblical terms he's even tried to usurp and take the titles of Christ even his name he's even trying to call himself Jesus and everything else okay so that's what they've done is this little shady, you know, deceptive cloaking of Christian terms and, and names and titles of Jesus and God. And um, so I thought it would be good to look at some of these things and then we're really going to start getting into the nuts and bolts of it, okay? So the first point they said is, it is monism. This is the new age, okay? The belief that all is one and one is all. In the New Age movement, history is not the story of humanity's fall into sin and its restoration by God's saving grace. Rather, it's humanity's fall into ignorance and the gradual ascent into enlightenment. 
So that's what the New Age teaches. They don't teach that man was created, you know, perfect by God in his image. And then they chose to listen to Satan and went into sin against God. And that that's where we're at in this fallen world. Instead, they teach that humanity just fell into ignorance and that gradually will ascend back up into enlightenment. So let's listen to some information about this, um, about the monism. Let's hear Gail Ripplinger, the video that we've already referenced, and I'm going to be referencing again in this teaching. She did some great research in bringing some things out. Uh, this is going to be talking about monism that the New Agers believe in. Now, I'd never really heard of monism before. I'm like, what is that? Somebody sitting around moaning? What's that about? <laughs> That's what I think. Okay, but... Um, it's what they were saying here, that all is one, and one is all. They're, they're talking about this monism concept here, which is in the New Age, is what they teach and what they believe. So let's hear this research from Gail Ripplinger on monism. Now, um, Mrs. Mullencott said something else. She went to the Presbyterian Church's USA's goddess worship re-imaging conference and you can see the woman the picture there of the woman raising her hands in worship and just in a few minutes I'll show you what she was worshiping okay but at that conference Virginia Mullencott says the monism m-o-n-i-s-m that's the belief that the universe is God which would mean you and I were a part of God okay now Christianity teaches that God and the universe are separate that God created the universe okay this is Hinduism that she's talking about. The monism that I'm talking about assumes that God is so all-inclusive that she is involved in every cell of those who are thoughts in her mind and embodiments of her image. Okay. Now, what were they worshiping? What was that woman worshiping? They were worshiping this. And the caption underneath this in the magazine article was the heart of the beast. They were worshiping something called the heart of the beast. Now, remember it says they worship the beast in the book of Revelation? Now, who would want to worship the beast? You know, you can't imagine these things happening. But there's the picture of these women raising their hands and worshiping this beast. Okay. Uh, now, the monism that she's talking about um, is the idea that God is one. And there are some other uh, lesbian authors out there who wrote a book called Changing of the Gods and uh, Naomi Goldberg said God is going to change we are going to bring an end of him okay so you can see the King James does refer to God as he or him perennially okay in the NASB in the NIV he becomes the one he is inclusive in other words he is the he she uh, Ted Koppel did a uh, analysis with his audience and he said how many people believe God is a he how many people believe he's a he she and how many people don't know what they believe 47 percent of his audience said that he was a he she 47 percent of the audience would agree with this he she notion the one okay now who is this one that they're worshiping now one of the poems or one of the uh, phrases that the Theosophical Society has talks about someone called the coming one and at the end of that poem, it says, let death fulfill the purpose of the coming one. Okay, now they're not talking about the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're talking about the death of Christians, I'm afraid. Okay, the purpose of the coming one. Now, the Bible tells us who the coming one is in 2 Thessalonians, whose coming is after the working of Satan. That's the Antichrist. Okay. Unfortunately, the New King James, instead of having he, which God identifies himself with the male gender, they have the coming one in Luke 7 20. Now, another name uh, in Lucius Trust uh, literature is the Mighty One, all right? Another name for Lucifer. They said, Come forth, O Mighty One, and let death fulfill the purpose of the coming one. So his name is the Mighty One or the Coming One. So in the NIV and the NASB, you have He, God, or the Lord God, changed to the Mighty One, the Mighty One, the Mighty One. Now let's look and see who the mighty one is. Okay. Now, um, 
this glossary of which words and terms says the definition for the devil is little god, title for the magister, as representative of one of the mighty ones, Diana and Lucifer, of the above mentioned witch legend are but figurative terms for the mighty ones. All right, I could probably give you 50 other uh, cult books that identify the devil as the mighty one. Okay. Um, in Madame Blavatsky's book, the title, The One, capital O-N-E, is so prevalent that she has a chapter called The One. And in that book, her, her occult book called The Secret Doctrine, she says that, that the dragon is the one, Lucifer is the one, Sanit, which is really just a scramble for Satan, is the one, the serpent is the one, it goes on and on and on. Now we also see another change in the NIV. Okay, the King James talks about the Lord Jesus Christ, and it says, uh, the household of God, that's all of us who are saved, is built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ, the chief corner stone. Now when I was a professor at Kent State University for several years, I taught architecture. And a cornerstone, as defined in an architectural di dictionary, is at the foundation of a building. It sets the angles for the building, okay? Now, the NIV has replaced that with a capstone, okay? A capstone is on the top of a building, all right? Now, this was taken off, off the back side of a dollar. This is the great seal that was put on there by FDR. We all know about his Masonic influence. but. Um, Zechariah 11:17 talks about the Antichrist, and it says his right eye shall be utterly darkened. So whoever the Antichrist is only has one eye left to peer out, and there it is. All right? So we've got the capstone instead of the cornerstone in the new versions. Okay. So you can see something about this monism, right? Um, I think it's interesting that... She was saying that they had this goddess, goddess worship reimaging conference, and it was the Presbyterian Church. So I was like, I thought they were claiming to be Christians. Look at this. How does Presbyterian differ from Christianity? Presbyterianism is a form of Protestant Christianity, primarily in the Reformed branch of Christendom, as well as a particular form of church government. Its primary tenets include the five solas, Scripture alone, faith alone, Christ alone, grace alone, glory to God alone. Well, it seems like to me that they already crumbled. If they're having these worship goddess reimaging conference, I mean, you see, you see the picture of the thing that they were standing there worshiping and they were calling it a beast straight out. Do they read the Bible? Do they go by the same Bible that we do? Something ain't right there, right? Okay, um, and just like Gail said, we've been, we've been studying and learning that this new age is totally based on Hinduism and the occult. So that God is in everything is coming from Hinduism. Not that he created everything, that he's in everything. Okay, let's look at some scripture. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 6, 16 through 18. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the, living, uh, the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Now God said he would be in us, in us. Those who choose him through Christ and separate themselves from sin in every way. That's the come out from among them and be ye separate. Okay? And that is stop the sin in our lives, that means to ask forgiveness, to repent, which is stop the sin, right? And Christians, yes, we still mess up sometimes. We're in these flesh bodies, and we, we mess up. But real Christians, 
We don't stay in sin. We don't love sin. We don't stay in sin. And the Holy Spirit brings that conviction on our hearts and on our minds. And we're quick to repent, to ask forgiveness, and to stop the sin and get it out of our lives, okay? Um, let's also look at John 14, 20, and then I'm going to uh, go to verse 23. And these are Jesus' words. At that day, that is the day of Jesus' resurrection, you shall know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man loves me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So after Jesus resurrected, then the Holy Spirit was given to those who had faith and believed in Jesus, in what he did for us, in being our sacrifice. Then the day of Pentecost came. They already received an impartation of the Holy Spirit when they believed. Okay? And Jesus breathed on them. That's a picture of our salvation today because he was there with them in person and present with them, right? That's a picture of being saved because the new covenant hadn't come in yet. They still had to be saved even though they had walked with him and learned directly at his feet, right? So when he breathed on them in the upper room, that's a picture of salvation. Then the Holy Spirit was poured out. Because he said, don't go anywhere and do anything. He said, wait here until you be endued with power from on high. You are not going to be effective. You are not going to accomplish anything for the kingdom unless you are fully baptized into the Holy Spirit, endued with power from on high. Okay? That's when they were baptized into the Holy Spirit. And today is still a two-step process. It still is to be fully baptized into the Holy Spirit. There is an initial impartation, and then when you are saved, you seek the baptism into the Holy Spirit because you want God's fullness inside of you and flowing out from you, through you, okay? You want His Spirit in fullness in your life. And the Holy Spirit is how the Father and Jesus come to us and make their abode with us, in us. It's the Holy Spirit, okay? They are inside of us because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God Himself living inside of us. God never said He was in everyone or in everything because He's not. He's not. We don't bow down. We don't worship the trees. We don't worship animals and things like that. He's not in those things. He made them through Jesus Christ, but he is not in them. He's not even in every person. Okay? They subtly twist God's word, knowing that God said that he would dwell in us and walk among us. Sometimes upon first hearing that, um, hearing that God is in everything as the New Age is teaching, that he is the universe and that he is everything and that you're part of God. You might think that's true because he lives inside of real Christians, those that have a little bit of knowledge about the Bible. Maybe they're not rooted and grounded and strong in their faith. Maybe they're not really even saved. I find that with a lot of people after you talk with them for a little while. And uh, so they might hear that and go, well, yeah, that, you know, that matches the Bible. Yeah, because God said he was going to walk in us and be in us. And yeah, that's true. Okay, so some people might go along with those things and, you know, those, those teachings and not realizing that what they're really doing is perverting God's word. They're actually saying he is in the tree. He is in the ground. He is in every person, believers and non-believers, etc. That's what they're saying. That's not true. That's just simply not true. We are God's creation and he is in those of us who have come to him through Jesus Christ, who have come and accepted Christ into our lives, okay? Um, that we, the ones who have sought forgiveness, 
who have repented of our sins and who are trusting in him. You know, we've turned our lives over completely, fully to him. And we seek the Lord Jesus and we are surrendered to him and we obey his word. We obey him. That's what it means to keep his word. It means you obey it. You read it. You believe it. You do it in your life. Okay? So this twisting of God's word that they do is a perfect example of why you have to study God's word. You have to have it in you. You have to feed your spirit. Feed your spirit man on God's word so that you can recognize these false teachings and you can avoid it. Because when you hear that, you should get a check in your spirit and go, you know, what? What are you saying? You're saying God's in everything? You know, what are you talking about? Because that ain't right, you know. If you have his word in you, you should start getting a check on those things, right? Now, you heard Gail talking about them with this monism and how they said, we are going to bring an end of, of him. We're going to bring an end of God. We're going to bring an end of him. They're getting that out with their New Age Bibles. They're not putting that in as much. They're starting to put the one, and like she said, the mighty one, and getting rid of he, him, his, okay? Getting rid of him. Look at this. This is Ariana Grande, one of Satan's puppets, and she's being used to push the agenda that God is a woman. See, they also were saying he, she. And that one uh, guy took a poll of his audience, and 47%, that's almost 50% of the people at that time, said, yeah, they believe God was a he, she. <laughs> Look at this one. They are boldly pushing this agenda that God is a woman. They made a satanic movie called The Shack. And in that movie, they present God as a woman. And if this woman was a true Christian, she would have refused to play the role of God. And she would have stood on his word as for the reason why. She would have educated and schooled some people and at least gave them a witness and just turned the role down, but she did not. Those actors in Hollywood, they serve a different God, and they do his bidding to deceive the masses. They are carrying out Satan's agenda. So if you find yourself really drawn to a certain actor, a certain actress, and you follow everything they do, and you really love their work, and you really, you know, whatever... Just remember, they are demonically empowered. They are serving Satan. They could not wait for the treasures that were laying up in heaven. They wanted everything and they wanted it now and they sold out to Satan. That's what you're watching, looking at and idolizing. And we're not to have idols in our lives, whether it's people, things, whatever it is. That's a no for Christians, right? Look at this one. The Spirit of God... She has made me, and the breath of the nursing God, she gives me life. This is by someone calling themselves Reverend Dr. Will Gaffney. Now, I dare say this is one of Satan's ministers for sure. You remember, he does have ministers posing as ministers of light. This is a perversion of God's word. Years ago, when I first heard that there were people that believed that the Holy Spirit was feminine... I mean, I was shocked. I was just like, what? You know, uh, back when I was, <laughs> when I really took people at face value when they said they were a Christian and I wasn't really looking at the fruit and didn't really, um, you know, I just was trusting that, oh, okay, well, they are a Christian because they said they were. And it's like I've come <laughs> far, far from that time, let me tell you. God has been growing me up fast. But uh, there was this lady and... Um, that, you know, doing research and different things. God, God takes me to many different places. And, and I was listening to her, and I thought, oh, okay, well, you know, she's, she's doing some good teaching. And then it wasn't but like a week or two. She started talking about the Holy Spirit being feminine. And I was like, whoa, I might have been a baby Christian, but I still had enough of God's Word in me that I had a check in my spirit. And I was like, no, no, ma'am, no, sir, no, that ain't right. That was the end of... Listening to that teaching, okay? So, uh, and also as God has grown me up, like I used to believe those televangelists on TV, 
that they really were Christians. And now I understand that that's Satan's ministers. And they're just up there deceiving the masses. They are not even about Christ at all. At all. But okay, so in my research I found the idea that the Holy Spirit is feminine in Jewish mysticism. Or you can also call that Judaism, which is witchcraft. That's what that is. And it's also found in Hinduism. You find the same teachings blended through these uh, false uh, religions. You find this, them believing the same stuff, teaching the same stuff, doing the same stuff, taking the same initiations. You find it all the same, okay? In Christianity... We read God's Word and we see that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they're all referred to as masculine. He, Him, His, Father, Son, masculine. We're not reading she, hers. We're not reading that, right? Let's look at Hebrews 1.3. Who being the brightness of His glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the power of his word, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus is the brightness of God the Father's glory, and he is the express image of his person. So if God were a woman, then Jesus would have been in the flesh as a woman he was not okay God's not mixed up he's not confused about any of this okay God is a spirit and he chose to relate to us here in the flesh in the masculine gender the Holy Spirit also is God and that means we don't call the Holy Spirit an it and we don't uh, call him a she. We use the same pronouns for God the Father, for Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And it's all he, his, him, masculine pronouns, okay? Um, God is not divided. He is not male and female. He's not both in one, okay? He's a spirit. If we could come up out of the flesh you know, sense of our minds and understand he is a spirit, okay? Um, some people want to believe in a female God or a female part of God, especially women, because they don't understand how God can be tender and loving and totally complete in the way he watches over us and loves us and cares for us. So they think there must be a feminine part because this masculine God can't get it done. He's God. He's perfect. He's complete. He's not lacking in any way. He's not lacking in any way that he needs to care for us and to be tender. He can be just as tender and just as strong and firm as he needs to be as well. He's complete. He's not lacking in any way. Um... He is not to be compared to how we live and think in the natural, okay? Sometimes we can't get spiritual things with our natural minds. Sometimes it's just harder for us, right? But he is everything that we could ever need, everything, in every way. He is perfectly complete. And everything that a good father and a good mother can be and give and sow into a child's life on this earth, God himself is all those things for us and more. He's all of that and more. He is high above what we can even imagine. The Trinity is male as relating to mankind. God does not have sex, you know, intimate relations. God doesn't have sex, nor did Jesus nor did, did, did or does any of them, nor does the Holy Spirit. The virgin birth was supernatural. It was a supernatural miracle that God did in order for Jesus to come in the flesh and be our sacrifice. The Holy Spirit did not have sex with Mary. Jesus did not have girlfriends. He did not have sex with anybody, nor does God the Father. 
in the New Age Bibles, when they took many references out that refer to God as male, they're making it easier to push their false teachings, calling God a woman, a she. Just like Gail brought out, where it just says the one. The one can be for a, a male or female. The one. The changes that they have made and they are continuing to make, they are promoting the sinful lifestyles and deceiving many into the worship of Lucifer. Let's go on to point number two. Another belief within New Age is that all is God. If all is one, including God, then one must conclude that all is God. That belief is pantheism. Trees, snails, books, and people are all of divine, one divine essence. A personal God who has revealed himself in the Bible in Jesus Christ is completely rejected. See, they're saying everything is God. You, you're, you're like, you just can't get your mind around this stuff. You know, the book, the snail, the everything, including themselves, right? Right? So there's that concept of they are gods. They're co-creators and they're creating their own, you know, life and destiny because they're God. That's what's taught and believed in the new age, okay? So they reject a personal God. So that's, Jesus is, is rejected because if you can be God, then that's, that's, that's taking him down a notch. That's belittling him, right? That's lowering him down to our standards, Okay, so since God is impersonal, the new ager doesn't have to serve him. They've now made him impersonal, and now they don't have to serve him either because they're God, remember? And to them, God is an it, not a he. Let's look at pantheism because this monism and pantheism is mixed up in it, okay? So pantheism, a doctrine which identifies God with the universe or regard, regards the universe as a manifestation of God. Worship that admits or tolerates all gods. So you wonder how these people are doing that, where um, in Hinduism has millions of gods. And how, how are they, you know, I, I don't never even understand how they can keep that straight. But okay, and you find that, in these different false religions where they're okay with whatever God you want to believe in. It's fine with them. Don't believe in God. That's fine too. Satan doesn't care what you believe in. He doesn't care what you believe in as long as it's not the true and real Jesus Christ, the one who can save you. If you believe anything else you believe, he's fine with that. He just doesn't want you believing in the real and true Jesus Christ. And this is why my aunt said that the universe was working for her because she thinks the universe is God. Remember that? About those pajamas? Okay, look at this. Pantheists are monists. They believe that there is only one being and that all other forms of reality are either modes or appearances of it or identical with it. Pantheism is closely related to monism, as pantheists, too, believe all of reality is one substance called universe, God, or nature. God created all things, but he is not in all things. He is in those who surrender their lives to Christ. He is omnipresent, but that doesn't mean just because he is all-present, omnipresent, that doesn't mean he's in the carpet, he's in the walls, he's in everything, okay? That is not what it means. He's not in a blade of a grass, he's not inside of a tree, okay? Now, the third point, there is a change in consciousness. If we are God, we need to know we are God, we must become cosmically conscious, enlightened or attuned to the cosmic consciousness. Now, let me just state, there is no cosmic consciousness, no universal mind. That's all New Age speak, okay? 
One of the main ways they strive to teach this enlightened state is through meditation. So how are you going to achieve this cosmic consciousness? How are you going to raise your vibrations? How are you going to raise your energy? How are you going to raise your consciousness? And all of this, one of the main ways that they use to teach to do that is meditation. Usually the New Ager reaches a point in meditation where the Kundalini spirit is released or activated and that is the point where they believe they are enlightened there is also a kundalini yoga that many new agers practice that will achieve the same thing there's many different things in new age actually that play into this kundalini activation that will get the new ager there okay but two of the big ways are kundalini meditation and kundalini yoga okay now, some who reach this enlightened status will claim to be born again. And that's a counterfeit of biblical conversion. So you could easily be talking to that person who's a new ager who has gone along with the like Christian terminology and then um, you ask, are you born again? And they will say, oh yes, I'm born again. I've been enlightened. I see the light. You see? Um... Kundalini, by the way, in Hinduism, is a feminine form of divine energy. This is also a counterfeit imitation of the Holy Spirit. And it's also where the false teaching that the Holy Spirit is feminine is coming from. They're always going to have their counter. Whatever it truly is in the Bible, they're going to have their knockoff version, their copycat version version the satanic version so the bible believers in christ we get born again by the holy spirit the new agers are getting satanically born again by the kundalini spirit that's a demonic spirit okay so there is a difference um the new ager who achieves that state and they have that experience, they have that feeling, they have that burst of energy, they have that where all of a sudden they believe and think that they have become enlightened. This is by evil spirits, not the Holy Spirit. That is demonic energy and the interaction inside of them that they're having. Now look at this. What do you feel when Kundalini awakens? Sensations of energy moving or trapped within certain parts of the body, often involving the chakra points. And on this little image, those points that are lit up, those little balls of light, those are supposed to be the chakras going up the person, okay? This process may become in some way visible to the experience. The energy feels unbearably strong or painful, often accompanied by shaking, jerking, or spasms. This energy that the person feels is the demonic setting up residence inside the person and being active. Like I said, that ain't nothing but demonic energy being active inside that person. And the shaking, jerking, and the spasms that's not of God. If you ever see uh, people go through deliverance who have those outward shows of what's taking place where they're shaking a real one, not these fake, what's, it, what's that guy, TB Joshua, he puts on a lot of fake for show deliverances and stuff. Those people practice their parts and it's just a joke. Um, but I didn't know that at one time and, that, and then as I've grown in the Lord, it's like then you come to see the false teachers for what they really are. But real and true deliverance when there are those outward manifestations they happen uh pastor Erustus churches when he's preaching and the demonic starts manifesting okay um so that shaking that jerking those spasms that's demonic that's what the demonic does in a person god doesn't do that and the people that want to be you know uh the the holy rollers that think that god causes people to know Slain in the spirit, yes, God can do that. Causing you to speak in another language, yes, God can do that. Those are holy, you know, uh, tongues that the Bible talks about and all of that. But 
shaking and jerking and flopping like a fish on the floor and laughing and barking and no. None of that is of God. None of that. Okay? That's demonic. So um, this type of meditation has nothing to do with God. And I am going to cover meditation in depth later on in this teaching series because we, we're really going to get into the meditation part of it, okay? Now, look at this. This is a picture of someone meditating and awakening the kundalini spirit. Remember, that's the demonic spirit. That's that false spirit, the counterfeit Holy Spirit, okay? The kundalini is also called the sacred fire. See how they're trying to imitate God? In, this, uh, in these false teachings of the New Age. They're, so they're calling it the sacred fire. It's not the Holy Spirit. Okay? It's a, it's a false fire. It's strange fire. If you remember, Aaron's sons brought what was called strange fire to God. And he struck them down dead on the spot. Because it was false fire. You don't want to get mixed up in that. You do not. Okay? Okay? So they call it sacred fire. And notice the serpent inside the person's body making its way up to the head. This represents the kundalini spirit and how it works and moves inside the person. And we know from scripture that the serpent always represents Satan without fail. That's what that represents. When you know something involves snakes or serpents, whatever you want to call them, spiritually... That is always linked to Satan, and it is going to draw the demonic into your life, always. And if you do anything in life, and you know somehow it is linked to a serpent, then you should have nothing to do with it, because there are going to be spiritual ramifications behind that. If you're involved in something, or you're doing something and in any way, shape, or form, it is involved, it traces back, linked to, has to do with, a serpent, you better walk away from it, ask forgiveness, repent, get it out of your life, and don't have anything else to do with it, and ask God to break off demonic attachments and strongholds and activity and whatever came into your life because of what you were involved in and doing. Because there are, worships, there are worship systems that are uh, false religious systems, occult, those mystery Egyptian Relig uh, Egyptian mystery religions, Babylon mystery religions that are linked to serpent worship, okay? And so uh, those that are in the New Age and they think they study up on this kundalini spirit that they're trying to release and they're trying to meditate and they're trying to get it to activate inside of them and they know that it's all talked about as a serpent force, serpent energy, then they should have said, hey, and if, they're, if they even think that they're, they're Christians, then they should have enough. You know, that's why you got to feed on God's word, right? So you can test the spirits. And then you would know, hey, the Bible says that old serpent, that's Satan. And they're like, I don't want to have anything to do with that. All right. Um, but when you embrace this kind of thing and welcome it in and you practice it, then you have opened the door wide for Satan and the fallen angels to work in your life seated right inside of you. That's what you have done. That's what's going on there. When you embrace that and you, you seek after it and you go after it, that's what's going on. That's what you have opened the doors to and welcomed it right on in, inside of you. Okay? Now... Christians should not be participating in yoga in any form, any way, shape, or form. Okay, yoga means yoking to Hindu gods. That's what it means, yoke. Okay, yoking to Hindu gods. Even if you don't chant, the poses are in worship of Hindu gods. That's the root of it. That's where all of that came out from, okay? It's fine to do exercises. It's fine to do calisthenics and stretching and whatever. But when you're over here doing everything that they're doing in yoga, that's a no-no for Christians, okay? Um, 
and nor should Christians be participating in this type of medita uh, meditation. It is not of God. It's not of God. You're seeking spiritual enlightenment. Go to the one who knows everything. Go to, you know, God the Father through Jesus Christ. And you're not going to get there through meditating and having some serpent go up your spine and out through the pineal gland, out through the, the crown chakra, and all of a sudden you're enlightened by a serpent. I mean, they're telling you. If you have spiritual eyes to see, they're telling you what you're dealing with and what you're doing. Okay? But, you know, there are a lot of people in it who are not trying to be Christians. They're not seeking Jesus Christ. There are some that were deceived over into it. And there are, there are many who are deceived because they're just not feeding on God's word. And many more because they're not really saved. They're not getting that check in their spirit because they don't have the Holy Spirit to give that pressing and to give that check in their spirit. There are many different reasons why people are getting tripped up in all of this, okay? It's okay. Um, when I administered deliverance to Simone, I remember at one point she said she had a feeling as if a snake crawled up and came out. And that reminds me of what the New Agers experience when they are trying and working so hard to be enlightened. Um, they describe this feeling of a coiled snake at the base of the spine uncoiling and crawling up the spine until it reaches the brain. And they describe a type of explosion sensation in their head, which they say is when they are enlightened. They're receiving information from the demonic realm and not from God himself. In closing, the research said the essential is not whether we believe or meditate, but whom we believe in and what we meditate upon. Christ is the true, personal, objective reality as he said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. Christians believe in Christ to the point that they want to obey him and his word, and then he will enlighten us. You know, uh, there's a scripture where God says, if any lacks wisdom, let him, you know, come to me and ask. He's the one that we go to and ask, right? And when I'm saying the one, huh, I'm not using that as a generic term, okay? It's Jesus Christ. It's God the Father, the I am that I am, the Lord God Almighty, okay? The Holy Spirit. There's only one. Um, we don't practice any New Age meditation. None of it. We're going to get there, but I'm just telling you right now, none of it is okay. None of it is godly. You don't practice and get involved in and do any of that type of meditation, okay? We meditate on God's Word. That's what Christians meditate on. And I'm going to talk about that more as the weeks and the teachings go on, okay? We're going to get deeper and talk about the meditation of all of this because it's a lot in New Age. That's one of their key, the, one of the key things that they're doing, okay? Um, so we're fixing to go to the Lord in prayer, and I want to ask you guys who really pray the prayers that I pray and, and stand with us in prayer, I'm going to be praying a prayer um, in Pastor Russus's ministry in the past couple of weeks, there was a head witch that was saved. She was the head witch, so she was over her coven of 12 other witches, uh, and they had been working to, you know, sabotage and and tear down pastor's ministry, his marriage, and all sorts of things. They've been working at it for like three years. And then God brought it out to pastor and made it known what was going on. And these witches got stirred up and got mad, and things got a little bit crazy. And um, this head witch ordered a demonic attack on her daughter, who was... You know, she was training her up under her. That's what these, the witches do it. That's what Luciferic families do. They train their children up to carry their mantles, okay? Just as Christians, you see, uh, the prophets, they always trained up the next one to carry that mantle, okay? And so anyway, um, her daughter was thrown off of a moving motorbike and ran over and, and left in the ditch. And so... 
to make a long story short, pastor was called to the hospital um, for this young girl because she had been attending his church and had gotten saved, and the witches were mad about that, and the mama was mad about that, and then she ordered basically a hit out on her daughter. And so the mama, the head witch, came there too. And so by this time, pastor knows because the demons have been speaking out during deliverance and saying what's going on. And so pastor invited the mother back to his church after they saw that the daughter was okay and pastor prayed over her and through prayers and, and looking after her, she's okay now. And I praise God for that. And uh, the, the witch came back to his uh, church and he shared the gospel with her. And then uh, she got saved. She accepted the Lord Jesus. And it was a long deliverance process. And she said that she had been wanting to change her life. But there was another witch in the coven that kept stopping her. And kept turning her back away from Jesus. So um, be praying for this woman. A any, anybody can be saved. I mean, even the darkest person that's done the darkest of deeds. As long as they don't. Um, blaspheme the Holy Spirit uh, as long as they come and accept Jesus Christ. So don't think a witch cannot be saved because this woman came and surrendered her life. And I'll tell you something, not just her coven, they are going to be after her trying to tear her down, but Satan too. He's going to be coming at this woman hard and heavy because she's now serving the Lord Jesus. So be praying for her protection and for her to get rooted and grounded in the faith and to grow strong in the Lord. So I'm going to be lifting her and her family up in the Lord. And her daughter, Sylvia, who she ordered the hit on, she had also been struck by lightning twice. Satan's been trying to kill that young lady. Certainly has. Keep, keep them in prayer. But you yourself better be rooted and grounded when you pray. Because otherwise, you're going to bring a tax on your life, okay? It's not, you know, people discount prayer. Prayer is powerful, and it is spiritual warfare. So let's pray, you guys. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life, the Son of the living God, and he is God himself. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd. You are high and lifted up. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. I praise you, dear Lord Jesus. I thank you for the blood that you shed for every single one of us who would come to you and believe and surrender our lives to you, ask forgiveness, repent of our sins, and ask you to please save us and be our Savior, Lord and King. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you did for us and all that you continue to do for us. You're our inter Cesar, you intercede for us. Thank you for the blood, that your blood that covers our lives, those who are in Christ. And dear Heavenly Father, you are holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And beside you there is no other. You are our all in all. I bless your holy name, Heavenly Father. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would please help each and every one of us listening right now to live righteous lives and to overcome and to have victory in the areas of our lives where we continue to fall short or where we keep struggling. Help us, Lord, to surrender every part and area of our lives to you. Help us to overcome, to pass our tests and trials quickly, Lord. Help us to get it, to pass the test and to move on. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will please set your children who are struggling with depression, loneliness, anxiety, worry, addictions, bad habits. Your word says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray that you would set your children free. I pray that they would come to you and be really and truly saved, that faith would be present, and that you would set them free, Lord Jesus. 
And I do want to lift up Elizabeth, that former witch, her daughter Sylvia, and her other children. I lift this family up to you, Lord Jesus. I pray that they would get rooted and grounded in the Word of God. I pray for your protection over them, Heavenly Father. Just as Jesus prayed for all of us, he asked you, Father, to protect us while we were in this world. Not that you would remove us, but protect us while we're here. Lord, please protect and strengthen this family. And I pray for them, and I pray for all baby Christians all around this world. Father, that they would get rooted and grounded, and that they would stand even when Satan brings the fight to their doorstep because he wants them back. He wants them to give up. He wants them to turn back. He wants them just to say, this is not what I want. This is too hard to do. Forget it. Please protect them. Please strengthen them. Please help them to grow strong in the faith, to have a deep and a strong faith, Heavenly Father. And I pray a hedge of protection around Elizabeth and Sylvia and her family, Elizabeth's family, and around Three Hearts Church congregation. Lord, I pray a hedge of protection around us and a wall of fire around all of us. And I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over all of us. And I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over Elizabeth and her daughter, Sylvia and her other children. And over the flock that you've entrusted to me, Father. I cover us all in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the victory that you died to give us and to set us free. And through you, we are more than conquerors. Please help us to overcome in every area of our lives where we're struggling and falling short. Please strengthen us, Lord. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will press down, shake together, and let the cups overflow to, the, to those you brought to this ministry, to the cheerful givers, Lord. Please bless it back to them in abundance, Heavenly Father. Please bless the ones who pray sincere Christian prayers for us. We thank you, Father, for all the prayers that are prayed for us this ministry, the outreach ministries. I thank you, Father, for the prayer team and for their service, Heavenly Father. I pray that you would bless them abundantly for all the prayers they're praying on behalf of others and for me and my family and for this ministry, for our outreach ministries. Thank you for their service, Father. Please bless them and protect them, Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will bless everyone listening, Lord. Please touch their finances and bless them in their finances, Lord, please help us through all of this economic crunch that they're portraying out onto the world. Please help us to, to persevere through all of this, Heavenly Father. Please give us all a hunger and a desire to read and feed our spirit man on your word, Heavenly Father. The word of God says, if you draw nearer to me, I'll draw nearer to you. Please help us to draw nearer to you, Heavenly Father. And I love you, Heavenly Father. I thank you, Father, for hearing and answering my prayers. I magnify you, Heavenly Father. And I pray and I ask all of these things in the mighty and precious and holy name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Hey, you guys. I just want to take a minute to um, let's go through how to pray the prayer of salvation, okay? And why? Why do we even need to pray the prayer of salvation, okay? And also, I'm talking to the people also who maybe walked with the Lord and you went away from him and you just kind of left it behind and you haven't really been walking with Jesus anymore. Um, that's what we call backsliders. I'm talking to both the person who wants to be saved for the first time ever and to the person who's a backslider who wants to come back to Jesus because this ministry does not believe in once saved, always saved. Okay, God does his part and we do our part. It's a team. We work together. All right, so the first thing is you might say, and I hear this a lot, and even my husband was saying it, to be honest with you, before we got truly saved. I'm a good person. You know, I haven't killed anybody. That's kind of the standard these days. As long as you haven't killed anybody, you're a good person. Really, listen to this. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's Romans 3.23. All of us have sinned. To be honest with you, because the world is in a fallen state, 
we all are born into sin, okay? And also for the people that think, but I'm a good person. I'm good. I haven't hurt. I don't hurt nobody. I do good things. I help people. That, that person, then uh, there's scripture in Isaiah that says for our righteousness, that's when we're calling ourselves good and we're saying, but we're good. We're good people. Our righteousness is as filthy rags to God. That's that thing that stinks that you're like, ooh, get it out of the house, right? Filthy rags to him. Okay, and he's the standard. He's the judge, Jesus Christ. And so the thing is, if we don't, if we miss his mark and we don't please him, we're not going to make heaven. So we want to make sure we got our ducks all in a row, right? And uh, if you look at the Ten Commandments, now we're not a legalistic church. We know we're under grace, which is what Jesus Christ brought. But there's people that say, you know, like I don't need Jesus. I'm I'm doing the Ten Commandments. Well, if you just pull out the simplest one, I'm just going to pull out one. You shall not lie. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, okay? That's what lying is. And if you say, I, oh, I don't lie, that's a lie. Everybody lies. Little kids come out lying. You say, did you do that? Did you break this? No, not me. Bam. So come on, you know. Um, so here's the thing. We've all broken uh, at least one of the commandments. And in the New Testament, it says if you break one, you broke them all. Because that's the attitude of God. He's like, if you break one, it's just as good as breaking them all because that's all it takes to separate you from him as one. Okay? So let's pray that prayer of salvation. It's real easy to do, y'all. You just say, Dear Jesus, please forgive me of all my sins. Please come into my heart. I believe you died on that cross for me, and I believe you rose again, and you are seated at God's right hand. Please help me to live for you all the days of my life. And thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Now, that prayer, you prayed to Jesus in his name. The rest of them, you're going to pray to the Father in Jesus' name. Okay? And you'll get all that as you learn and grow in the Spirit. Okay? Um, to see why you needed to pray that prayer of salvation, the scripture on that is Romans 10, 9 and 10. That'll show you about confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart and, and how to obtain salvation in case you're wondering how come we're doing that, okay? Um, now, something that you're going to want to do, you want to right off the bat start establishing your relationship with Jesus. Okay, and in order to do that, you want to hear his voice, right? You want to hear him. I don't know a person out there that's trying to be a Christian that doesn't want to hear his voice. And how you hear his voice? Read his word. That's his words written down for you and I to read. That's his voice speaking to you without a shadow of a doubt. Okay, then when you pray, you speak to him. So what's that? That's two-way communication. You're speaking to him. He's speaking to you. Now you've got a relationship going, okay? And you want to do that every day. Every day, seek him. You seek him by reading his word and praying and letting him know, I want more of you. When you read the Bible, ask him to open your spiritual eyes and your spiritual ears and to give you understanding. And he'll help you understand his word, okay? He wrote it by Holy Spirit, okay? And the next thing that you're going to want to do is get in a good Bible-based church. Now, I'm not pushing any kind of denomination. You just want to find a church that is preaching and teaching the whole Bible, okay? They believe in the Bible, and they believe in Jesus Christ, that he is God and the Son of God, okay? And that it's through him that we have our redemption and our salvation. He's the way, the truth, and the life, okay? And also, um, I wanted to say that some people think, oh, I just pray for forgiveness one time and I'm done because he died way back when. So now that I ask, it's all already done. No, you need to ask forgiveness and try to make it a habit on a daily basis because we're in these fleshly bodies before we get our glorified bodies. So we battle this flesh daily. So just, you know, when you pray each day at some point during the day, say, Lord, please forgive me for all my sins and go on about your prayer. And he knows you're praying and you're talking to him from your heart. And you talk to him just like you and I would talk, okay? You don't have to have fancy whatever, all right? And ask him to help you grow spiritually. If you want to, let us know that you prayed that prayer. It would be such a blessing to hear your testimony, okay? God bless y'all.